Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together 52 Pi's brand new mini desktop tower kit. Now this actually turns your Raspberry Pi into a mini desktop and personally I do like the look of this thing. But the case that they're including with this kit is 3D printed. So if you've got a 3D printer at the house, you can actually print the case itself and just buy all the extra components. But it also comes with the acrylic side panels. But basically what this does is it turns our Raspberry Pi 4 into a mini desktop. Comes with an ice tower cooler and an RGB fan. We have access to all the USB and HDMI ports on the Pi. Plus they include an OLED display. And with this, we can actually set it up to display the stats of a Raspberry Pi while it's running. Or you can add a custom script and show basically anything you want on that little OLED. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed. This is the case portion. And like I mentioned, the case itself is 3D printed. But it also comes with these acrylic side panels with some pretty cool little cutouts on it. And there's several different ways you can mount the fan with that ice tower cooler. You could actually add several fans in here, but I'm going to go with the stock configuration, the ice tower cooler, and that RGB fan that comes included. They've thrown in two OLED displays, and we'll take a quick look at these acrylic side panels. So there's a couple different configurations we can do here, but this was really designed for the Raspberry Pi 4. And they've also got one for a cutout, so you can mount that fan directly on the side of this acrylic. But like I mentioned, I'm just going to go with the stock configuration. The included instruction manual is very clear. It'll show you exactly how to get this all mounted in here, but basically the Raspberry Pi is going to sit at the bottom of the case. There is a cutout for the USB ports and Ethernet, but unfortunately once we have these acrylic side panels on the side, we cannot access the GPIO unless you have some kind of extension ribbon cable. Now this was designed with the ice tower cooler in mind, so in order to mount this Raspberry Pi in the bottom of the case itself, we need the hardware from that ice tower. We're going to use the smaller standoffs, and as long as you put your Raspberry Pi in here the correct way, it should line up. We'll just mount the Pi down here with the smaller standoffs, and then that ice tower will mount directly on top of those. But before we move on any further with this review, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Simply Nook and their all-new Platinum Snook Book. We have the Elite and the Pro. You can opt for a RTX 3060 or an RTX 3070 GPU. And right now, Simply Nook is offering $300 off the Platinum Snook Books, the Elite and the Pro, which makes it the lowest price that these workstations have ever been sold for. This mobile workstation is based on Intel's all-new X15 laptop platform, which means we get that mechanical optical key Board. We've got a glass covered trackpad and a full magnesium frame. Both of these portable workstations are powered by Intel's Tiger Lake 11800H. We have 8 cores and 16 threads there with a boost up to 4.6 GHz. And when it comes to the GPUs and the new Platinum Snucks, you can opt for the Pro model, which contains the NVIDIA RTX 3060 and 6 GB of GDDR6 VRAM or the Elite model with the RTX 3070 and 8 GB of GDDR6 VRAM. These are customizable over on Simply Nook's website. I will leave a link for this in the description. We can opt for up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and 16 terabytes of NVMe M.2 storage. They've also got onboard Wi-Fi 6 and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port built in. So if you're in the market for a powerful mobile workstation that in your off time you can also play your favorite AAA games on, I will leave a link to Simply Nook's website in the description. And remember, right now you can get $300 off the Elite or the Pro, which is the lowest price that these workstations have ever been offered for. So we've got it mounted in here. Everything lines up really nicely. We'll also have access to that micro SD card. But the next thing we need to do is assemble the Ice Tower cooler and mount it on the Raspberry Pi CPU. Now this cooler does come with two different fans. You can use the solid black fan or the RGB, or you can set up a combo if you want to. The next thing we need to do is mount the OLED inside of the top of the case here, and unfortunately there's no screws. I think there would be room to put screws through the front of this thing, but in the manual they suggest using a little bit of double-sided sticky tape or hot glue, so I opted to hot glue this in here. I've just lined it up. It's not going to go anywhere, but I kind of wish that there were some mounting holes here for that OLED. That way we didn't need to use any glue or double-sided sticky tape. I mean, you're not going to see that tape or glue from the outside of the case, but it still would have been nice to have some screw mounts here for this OLED. I have just went ahead and plugged everything into the correct GPIO pins. It's all listed in the manual, and here's the finished product. Now, there's a few different ways we could set this up if you want to. We do have these other acrylic side panels, that way we could mount two fans in here. 
but personally, I just wanted that single fan, and this ice tower cooler is going to keep that Pi CPU nice and chilly. I mean, even if it was enclosed here, I think we'd still be good to go, even with an overclock. I really do like the way this thing looks, but let's go ahead and boot it up for the first time. And upon the first boot, we're not going to get anything on that OLED. That's because we need to install the correct script. And over on their wiki page, they do have a full tutorial, but I actually ran into some issues with it. And I think the reason is because I'm actually running the newest version of Raspberry Pi OS, which is based on Bullseye. And the instructions they have listed is actually for Debian Buster, which is an older version of Raspberry Pi OS. So I did run into some issues, but I was able to figure it out. So I'm actually not going to do a tutorial on this OLED on how to get it to display, but I'm going to show you a few pointers, something that will help you get it up and running really quickly. So in the manual, it states to head over to their website and follow the instructions here. This is going to show the stats on that OLED. With the newest release of Raspberry Pi OS, which is based on Debian Bullseye, I could not get this working. It's a few lines that you need to put into Terminal and get everything downloaded. The only way that I could get this to work was to follow a tutorial from the do-it-yourself life or the diylife.com. I'll leave a link for this in the description. He literally goes through it step by step. It's very easy to follow and he also shows you how to get this up and running as soon as you boot. And I would highly recommend following this tutorial here, especially if you're on Bullseye. If you're on an older version, you can get their tutorial to work, but I had a lot of issues with it using Bullseye. So go with the diylife.com version. It's just so much easier. And once you have everything installed correctly, you're going to get something on that little display like this. It's going to show our IP, our CPU, our memory, which is our RAM, and our disk usage, which in this case is a micro SD card. Now you see that line coming through the screen. You will not see this with the naked eye. This is banding due to the frame rate on my camera not matching up to the frame rate on the OLED. But personally, I do like this. That way I can just take a quick look, see what my CPU usage, temperature, memory usage, and my IP is of my Raspberry Pi 4. So overall, assembly is super easy. Getting that OLED display to work correctly was a little bit of a pain, but I did find a kind of a workaround, and it's really because I'm using the newest version of Raspberry Pi OS. So if you were using something older, it would probably work out just fine with their stock tutorial. Now, since we've added a nice cooler to this Raspberry Pi, I have overclocked it to two gigahertz, and I did want to see what the temps look like. So what I'm gonna do is just run a couple stress tests, and the main one I usually use is called Stressberry. I've set it up so it maxes out all four cores on the Raspberry Pi for 10 minutes, and then it just creates a log in the background, and I can easily create a chart from that. That way we can see how these temps look inside of the case with that ice tower cooler. And after a little testing, the results are in. So with the 10 minute stress test, this Raspberry Pi 4 CPU is overclocked to two gigahertz. With the ice tower coolers fan on, we only hit 45 degrees Celsius. I unplugged the fan and we only hit 59. And with the ice tower completely removed, I mean, it hit thermal throttle in three minutes and 30 seconds. So you definitely want a cooler on your Raspberry Pi when you're overclocking it. But these temps look absolutely amazing. And they're not much higher if this was outside of the case. I've run tests in the past and we're only three degrees Celsius higher with the fan on. And it really comes down to those acrylic panels blocking airflow. But I mean, you're not going to thermal throttle even overclocked with this setup here. So in the end, I do like the idea of this, but there are a few things that I would like to see changed in the future, maybe a future revision of this, and that would really be those USBs and the Ethernet being at the rear of the case. I would have loved to see just kind of a clean front on this, and even if I didn't have access to that micro SD card, I would have kind of been okay with it. I know some people really need access to that, but even with a little slot there and maybe a pair of tweezers would have been fine instead of having this USB sticking out of the front. And really, the only other thing that I would change here is the case material. Now, this is 3D printed. I'm not a big fan of 3D printed cases for the Raspberry Pi. I mean, this is actually a pretty clean job. You can see the lines in the front a little bit. But if this was some kind of composite material, maybe just a plastic uh, injection molded, it would have made this a lot cleaner and just look much better in my opinion. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. Let me know what you think about this thing in the comments below. And uh, if you're interested in learning more, maybe even picking up a kit, I will leave a few links in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.